No, I listen to it all the time. I tell all my friends to smack it raw. podcast contains mature content. The views and opinions expressed by the co-host are not necessarily those of the host. Listener's question is advised. Hand jobbers and hand jobbies, welcome back to the Smackin' It Raw podcast episode 137. I know you missed us last week. We took a week off. There wasn't a whole lot to talk about, but we do have some stuff to talk about. We have a very special episode for you. I, of course, am your host, the Warden Mad Ritter, and I'm here, as always, with my co-host, Sir Cussalot Travis Pointer, a.k.a. the Quarantine King, a.k.a. T-Pain, a.k.a. Black Merkin, a.k.a. the HBIC, my boy Travis, how you doing today? Is that not, oh, I'm sorry. A.K.A. the Dragon King, A.K.A. Big T, A.K.A. Sweet T, A.K.A. T Money, A.K.A. Black Merlin, A.K.A. the H.N.I.C. Was that? I figured it was quarantine. We'd mix it up a little bit. We'd do eh, some. No, 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 no. I was willing to go with the quarantine king, but you know, then you then you just you know you took it too far, sir. You took it. Too I'm sorry. Far. I'm sorry. I I do that. Um, how are you doing under quarantine? By the way, I'm cool. Okay. You know, I'm just chilling. Me and the dog. He is, doesn't uh, talk much, so I'm cool with that. Here in Illinois, we have a uh, do not leave the house um, mandate, yet people are still going out and playing basketball and going to the beach and pretty much acting like nothing's happening as cases rise. So uh, stay the fuck home, ladies and gentlemen. If you're in Illinois, stay the fuck home. Like, go out. Oh, they're doing that do every do. fucking way, man. The people are stupid. Are you guys on lockdown, though? Yeah. It's not like enforceable by law, though. So people just do what the fuck they want, and yeah. Oh no, we're talking about handing out fines now. Like the mayor's like, "Fuck this shit, five hundred dollars fines, jail time. Like, shit, stay yeah. your ass at home." Yeah, yeah. I, on the other hand, uh, I'm not complaining about this because I'm happy to be working and making money. But uh, I got that note saying, "I don't care how bad it gets, get your ass to work." So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Have you've been essential, unlike GameStop. Yeah. <laughs> Who tried to claim they were because, you know. How else are people going to keep themselves occupied during the quarantine if they don't have games? They can get games digitally, sir. They don't have to go to GameStop to get them. Fair enough, fair enough. Um, have you been sliding into Sasha's DMs more frequently now that you've been alone at home? Actually, no. That probably would have been a good idea. I didn't even think about that. It really would have been because, I mean, she's at home. You're at home. You know, you going to do that now? Can you do yeah, that for me? Can you? Yeah, 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 I'll do that. Maybe you can find a quarantine panda gif. I don't know what a quarantine panda gif looks like, but we'll see. And, of course, as always, while Travis is doing that, we are going to go... Oh, I know. No, 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 no. I can't Oh, shit. That. That's not Sasha. Whew. That would have been weird. Yeah, 
I don't know if I've told you this, but I love Young Jeezy. Uh, we got a cartoon panda kicking his feet and covering his eyes for those of you who are not watching. Um, yeah, apparently he just saw something on TV that he didn't like. Possibly he was watching uh, something with the Tiger King. Have you been watching Tiger King? Travis? I have not been watching Tiger King, but the panda to me appears to be crying. So crying. He's, he's a sad crying panda. He's a sad panda. Okay. Uh, Kate watched all of Tiger King today while working from home. So, yeah, I saw that there, and I had one of those moments that I have sometimes when I look at something. I'm like, look at this white people shit. <laughs> like that uh, was that was literally what I said when I saw that there because everybody was talking about it. I'm like, what is it? And I looked at it. I'm like, would you look at this white people shit? And mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like it's one of those shows that everyone can enjoy though because like non-white people can watch it and just enjoy the weird shit that white people do and white people can enjoy it and either like be like me and be like thank god i'm not like them or bask in the fact that you know there are people on tv that they can relate to if they're weird like that yeah my thing is i didn't say it wouldn't be entertaining to watch you know oh yeah no 100 percent. a lot of, a lot of um, that white people shit is very entertaining we are gonna do a full episode where we break down what's been going on in wrestling instead of news and rumors we're just going to talk about what's been happening in wrestling some of the bigger topics because there's not a lot of content to break down so what we are going to do for you guys today is we're doing a special watch along episode a first ever smack and raw watch along with matt and travis and we're going to go back and do an old episode of wwf raw january 20th 1997 so if you guys haven't, uh, go ahead and cue that up if you want to watch along with us um, while we run down a few topics of what's been going on, and Travis and I bullshit a little bit about what we thought about what's been going on in wrestling. I'll see what Travis has actually been watching since I kind of let him off his leash uh, the last week and a half. Uh, first off, Travis, how do you feel the Hall of Fame has been delayed? Um, they're pushing it back maybe to SummerSlam, but they're not going to do a Hall of Fame. Obviously, it'll be real hard to do at the PC with nobody there in attendance to celebrate these people going in. Yeah, if there's nobody to celebrate with them, there's really no point. I get it. Um, yeah, push it back to when you can actually do it right. I feel you. Yep. Uh, also, the dark side of the ring, first two episodes have dropped. Episode uh, one of part one of the Chris Benoit documentary is on YouTube. Mm -hmm. I also believe you can watch it on Hulu with live TV. Uh, did you check that out at all? Negative. It is... It's interesting. It's some of it's very hard to watch. There's a lot about Chris. There's a lot about Eddie. Um, you got Vicky on there. You pretty much got a bunch of AEW. You got uh, Chris Jericho and Jim Ross. Nobody really from the WWE that currently works for the WWE. They're commenting on it, but you've also got Nancy's sister Sandra and David Benoit, uh, Chris's son, who looks a lot like Chris. Um, and they're on there, and yeah, no, some of it's it's a little hard to get through to watch, but uh, I'd imagine not so. in like a bad way, just yeah, it's a tough subject, but mm -hmm. they did a really great job with it. Uh, they did a really good job. I actually watched it this morning with uh, Kate, and uh, it was fantastic. So I definitely recommend going and checking that out. All right, Travis, we're gonna get at WrestleMania 36 um, a boneyard match. Between yeah, what the fuck is that? This disrespectful ass motherfucker, AJ Styles. Oh, yeah, he's been the greatest wrestler. the shit out of The Undertaker. And the greatest wrestler to ever lace a pair of boots, The Undertaker. Yeah, yeah, I have no idea what the fuck a Boneyard match is. Like, I was listening to the Get Your Wrestling Podcast, and they were talking about how... Because, like, AJ's fine, but he's not the best when it comes to cutting a promo. Right. Like, maybe he meant to say Graveyard, and he fucked up and said Boneyard. Now, like, we're going to get a Boneyard match. Um. Yeah, let's let's could, let's let's assume he meant to say boneyard, but it wouldn't make more sense if he said graveyard. Um, I've got to assume if it's a boneyard match. Like when I hear boneyard match, I think of like a uh, like a like a dump, like a uh, um, auto salvage yard. You know, cars stacked. We're kind of like that scene from uh, the opening of Nightmare on Elm Street Four, where the black dudes in a nightmare and there are all the cars and Freddie comes back to life and kills him after he survived part three, the dogs piss and fire on Freddie's bones and brings him back to life or 13 ghosts. Did you see 13 ghosts Negative. where they're running through the salvage yard? Oh, come on, Travis. 
maybe that's what we should do. Maybe we should just say fuck wrestling, and you and I should sit down and do some horror movie watch alongs. There's some shit you got to see. I'm a little disappointed. Yeah. What do you think when you hear Boneyard? When I think Boneyard, I automatically go to the Lion King in the Elevate Graveyard with all the bones and shit. That would be dope as fuck. That was what I first thought of. Like, I need, I need to go to, like, just this place where there's just nothing but skulls and skeletons and shit everywhere. That would be dope as fuck. Um, while we're talking about WrestleMania, it was announced today that due to his leukemia and his compromised immune system, uh, Roman Reigns has backed out of his match at WrestleMania 36, which I don't think any of us can, you know, say anything negative about. Obviously, yeah. that's the best, safest course of action. Who do you think, if anyone, steps up to Goldberg and takes Roman's spot, and will they win? Um, it's a good question, because at first I would think, like, okay, well, somebody else with a spear. But Edge is uh, occupied. Bob is occupied. Yeah, that that's another thing. <laughs> mm. <laughs> anyway... <laughs> No, hold on. Fuck that. You could have gave us Undertaker and Aleister Black versus the OC, and instead I get Aleister Black versus Bobby Lashley at WrestleMania with no fucking build. What the fuck is that? What the fuck is that? Anyway, um, names that have been thrown around are Samoa Joe, Braun Strowman, and then I even heard a rumor that they would put Goldberg in the match against Drew and Brock, and the winner would be double champion. Universal and WWE champion. That last that. option, I do not want it at all. Happen. They're not mm -hmm. doing that. Um, I like the Braun Strowman uh, idea. I like Samoa Joe, especially if Joe wins. I think Joe's earned it. I think it's about time we put a title on Joe. It sucks that it would come now in a time of quarantine where it might not mean as much, but at the same time, it'll still always be something that he finally did achieve. And I've got to assume that by SummerSlam or – whatever the next pay-per-view they decide to put on is, we'll be out of quarantine and we'll at least get to see him defend that title in front of a crowd. Um, Strowman I like as well. The problem with Strowman is I feel like they waited too long and they've kind of killed his character. Plus, he's got a lot of heat right now for talking shit about independent wrestlers. Did you hear about this? No. So um, there's been like GoFundMes for independent wrestlers who lost their bookings and – stuff like that because of all this. And Braun Strowman went online and said, uh, if you can't pay your bills doing this, then you need to find another job. Um, but stop they're not doing this. <laughs> stop asking for a handout and then said, and anyone that's got to say anything about him, he showed up in uh, like a Toyota something or some bullshit with $150 in his pocket seven years ago. To get where he is today, he had he had nothing to his name when he started. Blah, blah, blah. And it's like, yeah, but also you're like seven foot five and solid muscle. So fuck you. Like, yeah, yeah, exactly. Like that was like I forgot who it was. It was some. Oh, it was um, uh, Burt Crusher. Is that his name? Burt Crusher. Yeah, dude, I love that guy. He was uh, talking about when he was at basketball camp and. This dude showed up. He was like seven foot four. I forgot what the basketball player's name was, but he was like this tall ass motherfucker. I believe he played for the Rockets a long time ago. And he was like, he told this story about how he was able to become an NBA player because it was, you know, he stopped partying and focused and worked hard. And then he was able to accomplish it. And I'm like, oh, oh yeah. motherfucker, he's seven foot four. Yeah, he's like, he's completely left out the part where he's seven foot four. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, how do you feel about WrestleMania being two days? Uh, we'll Saturday see. and Sunday. I, I'm taking a very let's see approach to this year's WrestleMania. You know, it's like it's not looking great to me, but I'm like, we'll see. Well, especially because they're pre taping it, so they can do a lot of editing, they can do cool things. Um, one thing I gave AEW credit for last week that they took away this week was they put some fan or uh, some wrestlers in the crowd mm -hmm. and it made a big difference this week. They had some people in the back, and they would do some picture-in-picture picture and show them in the back gambling on matches and interacting with each other. It was still all right. It still was a full show, which I do appreciate AEW doing for us, is giving us a full wrestling show. Um, they did cancel Blood and Guts, which I think is also the best idea because how are you going to do war games in front of no crowd? 
especially, you know, in a match that's supposed to get bloody. So, you you know, got a lot of bodily fluids going on at the time. We're really not supposed to be messing around with people's bodily fluids. Correct, correct, correct. Um, but, no, I commend AEW for going out there and putting on two. I'd say last week's show was better than this week. This week was still all right. Um, you know, we had the debut of Matt Hardy. We had the debut of the exalted one, Brody Lee, who is apparently – spoofing Vince McMahon and there are some fans like me who think it's fucking hilarious in these uh pre-recorded segments and then people who are like oh, I wish he'd stop taking shots at WWE I wish they'd stop taking shots at WWE and just do their own thing it's like man come on now like it's fun somebody sneezed Brody Lee like freaked out on him he's dressed in a suit he's eating a steak he's telling people they can't eat until he finishes eating like they're doing great shit here and I really enjoyed it um i'm assuming brody lee is luke harper yes brody lee is luke harper okay and he is the exalted one and also he's he's beating guys and then giving them a mask and he's like strength and numbers come join me like there's a whole like the more it's like the more you dig into that character the more parallels you can find to vince and it makes it even funnier and better whether they intended that or not it's pretty great um can you tell how much aew i've been watching yeah (laughs) did you watch last week at all no, because no. I told you last week was a good show. I um, know you did, and I, you know what? And I had every intention of doing so. I have time. I just didn't. I don't know how I ended up not doing it, but somehow I just didn't do it. NXT last night, um, also a full show. Um, a lot of good matches. Um, they are working since we're not going to get takeover starting April first next week. They're going to start giving us some of those takeover matches in two weeks. We're going to get Gargano versus Ciampa. Last time ever, they're building this as who's the real face of NXT, and it looks like they're going to do something really cool because Triple H mediated it and said that this is it. Like, no more them beating each other up, destroying shit, none of that. We're going to have one last match. He'll tell them the time and the place, and they're going to squash it, and it's going to be the end of it. Um, We got that ladder match coming up, uh, number one contender for the women's title. We got five participants announced, including a returning Io Shirai, who's back from injury, who just got a spot. Um, and then the last spot will be determined next week in a last chance battle royal that's got like Dakota Kai and Shotzi Blackheart and I think Bianca and a few other names. Whoever lost, this is their last chance to get in um, and be in the match. So that'll be coming soon. Um, Keith Lee versus Dijakovic versus uh, the Saint, uh, the ripoff Saint, Damian Archer. Um, or Damien Priest, I'm sorry, Damien Priest, Lance Archer <laughs> was AEW. He fucking shoots an arrow, man. I know, like, come on, I know. you can't have Lance Archer yeah, not shoot arrows and Damien Priest shooting arrows and not expect me to fuck that up. Well, here's the thing I thought you did that on purpose. So, no, no, just, I didn't. I thought no, you were didn't. making a joke there. No, no. Um, I've been really bad at making jokes today, too. So, that that's a whole other thing on Twitter. Um, but yeah, no, so we got that, which is really fun and cool. Um, I'm looking forward to that. They did some cool shit with that on NXT this week that, you know, if you don't want to watch all the matches, like I'm sure you don't want to watch Austin Theory versus Tyler Breeze, no matter how great I tell you the match is. Uh, But you can fast forward through some of it and get to some of the better stuff, like the Keith Lee stuff. Uh, Triple H obviously is amazing on the mic, so anything that he's involved in is great. There's some good shit in there. Oh, new tag team showed up with a new manager, Travis, and the manager, Uh, yeah. I didn't see who it was, but I saw there was a manager. He he's known as uh, his real name, or I guess what he was using before WWE was Stokely Hathaway. I don't know if that's his real name or not, but I've seen him do some stuff with Keith Lee on YouTube or like on Twitter, like behind the scenes and shit. But he's going by Malcolm Bivens. I just really hope like this isn't like a uh, judging by the way the guys looked and how WWE tends to do things with stereotypes. I'm hoping they're not going to do like a Muhammad Hassan or like an Islamic uh, extremist type gimmick with these guys. I hope that's not where they're going, but I doubt um, it. They, they're they probably going to be the next wave of like the AOP or the Ascension, like that big dominant team. And they went after Matt Riddle this week. So they're already attacking the tag team champion. Uh, Pete Dunn, obviously trapped over in Europe, not allowed to fly over and help out his boy. So Riddle's getting that ass beat all by himself uh, back here in America. Cool. And, uh, oh, Sonny is out of uh, – she's out of jail. I don't know if you know she was in jail, but she's out. No, nah, but I, I do know she's um, trying to sell her premium snap right now. Oh, yeah, no, she's back to she's back to doing her porn shit. Yeah, yeah. 
I've seen her tweets. I'm like, yeah, you gotta add my. I've seen her tits. Oh, we all have. So yeah, and more. <laughs> like I said, we we've, we've seen all of her. And then I saved the best thing for last. It's more of just like an opinion from you. Um, at SES Vince and uh, at Mr. 8984, the two hosts that I will be working with this Sunday live from the Smacked Raw podcast. That is right. The Smacked Raw podcast and the Smacked Raw podcast are coming together this Sunday. Uh, we're doing a show for them. Uh, it's their Wrestling March Madness uh, tournament. 64 men. We're going to be arguing, figure out between Raw, SmackDown, NXT, and AEW who is the best wrestler right now. Um, it should be fun. You guys should check that out. But uh, I was talking with them on Twitter during Monday Night Raw because we had a tag team match with Cedric Alexander teaming up with Ricochet, and they actually worked really well together. Yeah, but I saw that match. What we were talking about, what was brought up by those guys and in the discussion is MVP – managing those guys thoughts i'm with it 100 I, I mean with it because the thing they is the need two a mouthpiece. Of them, they need it yeah exactly neither one of them can talk so they need a mouthpiece two watching them in that match i'm like oh oh they may have found something here like like wait wait you you might have just did something if they embrace the fact that they can be a, this great tag team you know they can be that really cool high-flying team I agree. They got to start, you know, wearing the matching tights. They got to get some music. But Cedric Alexander needs to start fingering his own butthole. And they do it in tandem on video? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, if one member of the tag team is doing something, the other member has to, Travis. Like, that's – like, I got, Kate, I got Kate pregnant. I got a baby coming. Now I expect you to go knock somebody up real quick because we're partners. What I do, you got to do. I don't know about all that. <laughs> all right travis uh let's get into I our watch along get somebody pregnant does that count uh yeah that'll count i'll give that yeah, he still I mean, he's kind of like the co-co-host so yeah he still got his nuts i'll send him out there you know i don't know how long a uh we're you know what we're not talking about dogs having sex we're not gonna do that we're not getting into that um let's get into this watch along though so we went with january 20th 1997 because we wanted to do an hour-long episode we're not trying to sit here for two, two and a half, three hours watching a Raw, you know, um, we want to keep our podcast about our normal time. We had some stuff to talk about. But you picked this out, Travis. Uh, you want to tell everyone why you picked this episode? I mean, we can. I mean, you gave me a few choices, one of, one of which being the Raw right after WrestleMania 12, and I just didn't want to watch that. Just It's too much. It's too much. I didn't want to watch the Raw right after Bret Hart lost the title. I just didn't want to do it. I saw the others. I'm like, eh, this will be fine. Nah, nah. Then I saw this one. Seeing that, you know, it's the one right after the Rumble. You know, the Rumble's my favorite pay-per-view. And, you know, some interesting things happened at this Rumble. So, figured this would be a fun one. I'm down with it. Yeah, I just kind of Googled, like, what are some of the best Raws from this era that were about an hour long. Kind of made a list. And then I threw in the first SmackDown ever, just because it's the first SmackDown ever to see what you want to do. But, uh, yeah, so if you guys are here, get uh, on your apps or our internet or whatever you're going to do, go to Raw, January 20th, 1997, and uh, we'll give you a little countdown. Uh, we'll do a uh, 3 two, one play. So, three, two, one, play. And uh, we're not skipping the intro because I haven't seen this intro in a long fucking time. Me neither. Oh, they can say WWF and show the logo? Yeah. They got that back, I believe, like a year ago or a little longer. San Antonio Express News, Travis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We get, well, when I had a job. We um used to get those at work. <laughs> Did you hear, Vince? He said everything in Texas is big. Now, we had that discussion about things being bigger in Texas. So how long before you noticed the change? I mean, there was no change necessary. I was already that much bigger anyway. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, yeah, Stone Cold Steve Austin won that rumble, right? On paper. How 
How does the videotape say otherwise? Here's the thing. Here's my thought on this, Travis. If you are to follow the rules, the rules need to be enforced by a referee. So if the rules say both feet touch the floor, you're eliminated, that's only if the ref sees your feet touch the floor. If he didn't see your feet touch the floor, you can't be eliminated. So technically, Austin didn't cheat because it wasn't seen. If the only time cheating is occurring is when it's not seen, then no, then very few people ever cheat. <laughs> That's true. Uh, I'm, I, I'm with that. I agree. Unless it's against The Undertaker. Because anyone <laughs> that's ever beat The Undertaker has cheated. Hmm. Man, look at the fucking crowd. <laughs> like... The way they're dressed. Yeah. Yo, these crowds used to be so hype. What's wrong with people now? I they're too busy sitting on their phones trying to record shit. Oh, oh, there's your boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Brett the is Canadian not fucking hero. around today. No music, no nothing. Now fuck this. Howard Finkel. The Fink. The Fink. How is he not in the Hall of Fame? How are we not inducting Finkel into the Hall of Fame? I thought he is. I don't think he is. I don't think – I could be wrong. I don't think he is. I'm almost positive I remember hearing him do his voice at his induction. I didn't think he could call it a belt. I thought that was that was no no. It was not a belt. Belts hold up your pants. This is a championship title. Yeah, I thought that was a thing from Vince. I don't know. He is pissed. I mean, wouldn't you be? No. I mean, he's lucky he got to Get in the ring with Stone Cold Steve Austin. Like, what's there to be mad about? Getting cheated? I mean, it's kind of... Didn't we just talk here. about this, Travis? He didn't get cheated. He did get cheated. It's fine. I'm not against people cheating. That's the problem you're having here right now. Yes, he cheated. I don't have a problem with them cheating. If you can get away with it, fine. Have at it. I'm just, you know, we're not going to pretend you didn't cheat, though. By the way, I'm... Uh... I have not had a cigarette since the last time we recorded an episode of the Smack and Raw podcast. Oh. So. Congratulations. Well, you know, wife's having a baby. I thought maybe quitting smoking for, you know, logistical reasons of, like, being able to breathe and do things with the child. And, you know, she's not – she can't, so I quit with her. Shit like that. Mm -hmm. It also helps for the baby to be able to breathe, too, once it's born, you know. Yeah, yeah. Well, I wasn't smoking around my pregnant wife. I'd go out in the garage and smoke mm -hmm. uh, until I did quit. So, so he yeah, should yeah. be getting a World Wrestling Federation Championship belt. Or did he say bout? I think he said belt again. Look at that hockey shirt. <laughs> I like how we... Used to roll our sleeves up back then. Like, you didn't just let your sleeves hang. You'd roll them up. Mm -hmm. Just throw your biceps off a little more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Kevin Nash still does that, by the way. <laughs> does he really? Yeah. You have, man. This not ain't yet. the first time. Yeah, not yet. Oh, he got screwed. Oh, he's been screwed by the World Wrestling Federation multiple times. Yeah, but including the worst in, one. Including at WrestleMania 12 that you tried to make me watch the Raw after. Just so you know, I can hear your TV and my headphones. You can? Yeah, just in case you got to go back and do that or there is a little bit of an echo. Hold on one second. So Travis is going to fix his volume. And while he's doing that, um, you see, can you guys see that kid back there with the, the hair, the bowl cut? Yeah, I had that. That was me. I mean, that person isn't me, but that's my, that's the hair I had at this time. 
Oh shit, Brett just quit. Is that better? Yeah, Brett just quit. I don't blame him. Now this is pre bad guy Vince. Bad guy Vince didn't really show up till after Survivor Series of this year during yeah. the Montreal screw job. Before this, it wasn't really talked about that, you know, he was the owner. It's like people knew, people didn't know, you know? You know. The crowd loves him. Yeah, man. And they're not even in Canada. He was the excellence of execution. So he said, the best said there is, things. the best there was, and the best there ever will be, sir. Yeah, he said a lot of things about himself. A lot of true things. I know he believed it. Oh, hey, Stone Cold. Again, no music. What is with that vest? <laughs> the fuck is that? <laughs> and where's the audio? Austin's talking shit and they ain't even got the audio queued up. Oh, man. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. He has a good point. Let's talk about this vest, though. Like, no yeah, skull, right. no BMF, no 316, none of that. Yeah, Just this is, this is, this is pre-BMF on the vest. But he said Austin 316, so he Austin 316 is a thing. That was at King of the Ring. In 96, I think. When was King of the Ring? Because he started calling himself Stone Cold right before that King of the Ring. Yeah. You know it'd be great for this? Phil. Phil is one of those guys that has dates. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. everything. He was like, yeah, it was on March 3rd, 1996. It, 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 his win happened at exactly 9.17 p.m. Uh, what? Whoa, 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 whoa. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you heard him. He told him he could bring the Undertaker's dead ass down here because he threw him over the top rope and he'll whoop his ass again. Oh, yeah, no, that's great. Undertaker is going to come down and be the bad motherfucker that Undertaker is. I'm just really excited because I didn't really read what was happening here. Are you telling me I'm going to get two of my favorite wrestlers of all time right You're now? You're welcome. Uh, no, I appreciate it. Also, that old school Raw set, fucking terrible. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. This is, you know, not much of a Titan Tron going on or anything. No stage. They just walk on out. Yeah, you're right, 96. I thought so. Remember when, like, Raw was first on and it was, like, uncut, uncooked, uncensored, but it really wasn't uncensored? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And they said it was live, but it was only all <laughs> live at first. It was only live every other week. Could you imagine being someone who was born and the only wrestling they were exposed to was – our current commentators tables with the flat screens and shit like that, watching this and seeing that desk lamp. Oh shit. Speaking of hall of famers, the British Ooh. bulldog who will be inducted this year. Um, who's that Travis? Um, Cause it looks like Herbie. It does. I forgot what his name was. <laughs> Dude, he's going to hear that and he's going to be pissed. Uh, he'll be all right. It no, seriously. Like, it does look like Herbie. Actually, you know who it name. looks like? It? It's Chris Scott. Oh, shit. It looks just <laughs> like Chris Scott in a bow tie. 
Chris Scott's this kid that uh, Travis and I went to grade school with that used to watch wrestling with us. You remember when we did that uh, hand puppet, that wrestling hand puppet? Hell yeah. Skit? Yeah. We had, to, we had to do a puppet skit. So me, Travis, and Chris Scott got together in our three-man team, and we made wrestling hand puppets, and we put on a wrestling match with hand puppets uh, back in, like, fifth grade, fifth or sixth grade? That was sixth grade. Fifth grade, sixth grade. we were in the same class. Yeah. So we've got a uh, French Canadian teaming with a British person going against two Frenchmen. Is that is that what I'm saying? This is like NXT UK. I mean, technically Canada is, is not the UK, but this is like NXT UK. Well, no, he's not French Canadian. He's just Canadian. Aren't all Canadians French Canadian? No, that's Quebec. Okay, okay. Not Montreal? No. Okay. Wait, in my, I think Montreal is in Quebec. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, Quebec. I know what I'm talking about. Don't try to confuse me. But aren't they from Montreal? No, he's from Calgary. Oh, yeah, Alberta. That sounds British as shit, too, though. Yeah, but not French. <laughs> Your argument was that he was French-Canadian. It's all the same shit, Travis. Once you, once you leave the coast of North America and you had – East, like you get to Europe, it's all the same shit until you get to Asia, and then it all changes. And that depends on what part of Asia you're talking about, though, because Russia is also Asia. Part of it, yes. Do you think those people in Russia consider themselves Europeans or Asians? Oh, that was a beautiful belly. It was. He's talking about the suplex, folks, not his actual belly. No, that's, <laughs> I was talking about my belly. I was thinking about doing a dance for y'all. Um, but yeah, it's a good, ooh, nice. It is wheel kick. great and sad to sit here and watch Owen Hart wrestle again. I have not seen an Owen Hart match in probably over 10 years. Like, I have not gone back and watched yeah. Owen Hart wrestle in a long time. It's one of those things where you forget how good he was, you know? Oh, how were Furnace and LaFon, or at least whichever one of those two this motherfucker is, uh, we're going to go with Furnace. How is Furnace not, like, how did he not stick around? He just hit a motherfucking Hurricane Rana. Like, I don't know. Maybe he just had no personality. I also still don't understand how British Bulldog never won the title. That blows my mind. Yeah. What are they going to say his name? If you guys are watching this, even though we're recording this and you guys aren't technically watching it live with us, Go hit me up at Matt Ritter on Twitter and let me know if you know who that is because I cannot, for the life of me, think of who that dude is. And I need to know. Well, we're just going to call him Chris Scott for now. <laughs> but, yeah, no, I have no idea how the British Bulldog was never champion. And also, this is kind of pertinent because during – you know, the whole Chris Benoit thing, they were talking about how Chris Benoit was influenced by Dynamite Kid. Dynamite Kid was part of the Bulldogs with the British Bulldog um, and mm -hmm. used to do the diving headbutt, and that's why Chris Benoit did it, and Harley Race did it, and Harley Race said, don't ever do this, and then Dynamite Kid said, fuck it, and did it anyway, and then told Benoit, don't do it, and Benoit said, fuck it, and did it anyway, and Dynamite Kid ended up in a wheelchair, Harley Race was all fucked up, and then obviously we know what happened with Benoit, so... Right. This is actually a really damn good tag team match for, I mean, WWE, which never has really focused on tag team matches. Like, and two guys like Ferdinand and LaFont, who I, I don't ever hear get talked about. Clarence Mason, about that's his name. Clarence Mason? Yeah, yeah. I knew Chris, I remembered him, but I'm like, what the fuck is his name? Yeah, Clarence Chris Mason. Scott. Chris Scott. <laughs> Clarence Mason, clearly supposed to be like, you know, someone who's, Resembles someone in the Nation of Islam. Okay. Okay. I didn't really understand that back then, but yeah. You remember when Undertaker used to have the uh, the teardrop, like he murdered someone? Yeah, he killed his parents. Yeah, but what happened to the teardrop? Like, it just, did his parents magically not get murdered and it just went away? Oh, yeah. It was a magical teardrop. Once he moved past the fact that he murdered them, the teardrop just disappeared. Okay, okay. 
when, when um, he finally came to terms with that, what are you oh shitting about? I, I didn't. I, did I miss something? No, I I just they showed Ahmed Johnson like slamming somebody through a table in black and white. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, it looked yeah. violent. Yeah, he was a the Femme Nikita. Nikita. <laughs> Holy shit! <laughs> wow. Why is that still here? I don't know. How did they not get rid of that? I don't know. Coming up, <laughs> but next. I'm so happy that they didn't. Like. <laughs> So I quit smoking. What I'm doing is I'm using this. Um, it is a nicotine salt pouch uh, with flavoring. So no tobacco, no chewing, no spitting, none of that. None of the chemicals are bullshit. It's just a nicotine pouch that when I feel like having a cigarette, I get that little bit of nicotine. It's like three milligrams, and it's half the price of a pack of cigarettes, and it lasts me twice as long. And nice. it's helped me wean away from, you know, that awful habit that I, I miss so very, very much. Um, Speaking of habits, there was an announcement made today on the Creation Conversation. Those of you who have already seen slash watched that episode will know that I took my last drink for a while during that podcast. Is there a reason? Is it is it just because you can't get liquor, or it's it's mostly financial? Okay, okay. Reason mostly financial. It's more of those I things maybe. Like no, the liquor stores are all open, sir. <laughs> no, no. I thought maybe, you know, like a very a person very close to you who was concerned about your drinking may have no, gotten no. through to you over no, the last no, few weeks. Because here's the thing. You said I had a drinking problem. I never thought I had a problem, so it's whatever. I thought maybe I said it and now you finally agreed and you no, were addressing it. No, no, it was it's purely financial. This one is like ah, yeah, I gotta save money. Oof. I can't afford to that keep was buying a, liquor right now, so I just won't drink for a while. <laughs> did you hear that Enziguri? Yes, I did. I did. Oh, it is Furnace. He did say Doug Furnace. I called it. I don't even know who the fuck, which one that was, <laughs> but I was right. Goofy looking motherfucker. How do you know that's the one that's still in the ring, though? Because I can't tell him apart. Well, because JR just said Doug Furnace won't quit, but and what he if kicked that out. Was the, but how do you know that's the one that was in before when you said his name? Because he kicked out, and JR said Doug Furnace won't quit. I know, but when you first said his name was Furnace. Oh, no, I didn't. I just said we're going to say Furnace because I didn't know who it was, and I like the name Furnace, like, better than LaFon. I didn't want to – LaFon, I just don't enjoy saying it. I was just guessing. That's I had no saying, idea. But when you first said it, how do you know that wasn't LaFon at the time? Uh, because they don't look alike. Furnace sure. has that long, curly hair, yeah. You know what? Maybe I just haven't paid attention to the other guy. Just, he hasn't really been in the ring much. Yeah, yeah that's that I probably what it is. That's what it is. Anyway, back to your drinking problem. So that I don't have. <laughs> no, because what I was going to say was, Travis, is you're right. You, I have said you had a drinking problem. You haven't. But I thought, you know, they say admitting you have a problem is the first step. So I thought maybe we hit step one. No, no, it's just I need to save money because I'm going to be broke for a while. So I just won't drink. Okay. It's not a big deal. You know why? It's also going to make a real. What? I was going to say that lack of alcohol is going to make it really hard for you to knock somebody up in time. But no, I was, what I was going to say, damn, I lost my train of thought. You threw me off. Just so you guys know, real quick, uh, time stamp, I'm at 1943, 44, 45, 46, 47. Yeah, just in case you got to sync up. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, look, dude in the corner, he looks like oh, I a tall Dean Malenko. I remember what I was going to okay. say before I forget again. Like, yeah, so I'm just not going to drink for a while because I just don't have the money for it. You know why I can just do that? Because I don't have a problem. Anyway, keep going. Okay. No, see, this guy looks like Dean Malenko. It's not the same guy. Different haircuts. Yeah, I see. I see now. Like okay. I said, I think I just didn't see that guy, and I assumed they were tagging in and out, and it was just the same. just looked the same. Because, you know, so all fresh. He's, like. he's still with the Heart Foundation here, right? He hasn't become the Nugget and the Black Heart and joined the nation yet. I don't think they've really formed the Heart Foundation yet. Okay. But yes, it's before that. I don't even. But see, I don't think they really. Because that was the when they became foundation. heels. Yeah. That's when they were heels in everywhere but Canada. Yeah. So this was like a couple months before that. I think that started in the summer. Ooh. I really thought the Heart Foundation was around longer than that before. Yeah, that was a bad DDT. Yeah. But see, Furnace is the better of the two. The five <laughs> sucks. That's why he was on the ring. My boy Furnace here is that killing That makes it, sense. That makes yeah. sense. 
LaFon is trap. Oh, yes. With the slam. Hit him with a slammy? To the face. Here we go, Bulldog with that Bulldog. Yum. Again, it, power slam. Oh, power slam. Yeah. Why did I call it a Bulldog? Because <laughs> he's the Bulldog. Yeah. Um, yeah, no. See, ref didn't see it. It's not cheating, Travis. No, the ref, it was still cheating. It just worked. If the ref didn't see it, it's not cheating. It's not illegal. If you steal something and no one knows you stole something, it's not illegal because no one knows. No, it's still illegal. You just got away with it. No. Nah. The legality of it depends on whether or not you're caught. If I was just, man, you suck. Like, So they filled that arena two nights in a row? I don't, know if you know any, I don't know if you know. The Alamo Dome is fucking Dude, huge. That, <laughs> like, I can tell looking at it that it's fucking huge. Yeah, yeah. When and I was mind you, this is 97? Yeah. But this isn't really like, this is still kind of like WWE was having problems doing shit at this point. Like, they, they're they kind of on the comeback now with what's going on, but they're still not like yeah. where they're going to be with a year from now. Right, right. So this is very impressive. That Jesus Christ, that's a big stadium. Like, yeah, the Alamo I had the Dome Allstate. is fucking huge. Like when I was there for the Rumble a couple of years ago, I'm looking around I'm like, I don't know how they got this many people to come. But all right, cool. Like it wasn't full. And you see, they kind of black some stuff out because it's not completely sold out. But still, it's impressive how many they got in there. <laughs> I I never understood this version of the nation. They've got there he is again. Uh, they've got crush. Yeah, I never understood it either. But later on, they they figured it out. <laughs> they did, but then they let Owen Hart like. <sighs> but that was afterwards. Like they had a, they had a good thing when it was you know Farouk, Mark Henry, um, D'Lo. That's not the same. Oh, there, yeah. Okay, there he is. There's, there's Chris Scott. Mustafa, you know, when they when they had that crew, and then they added the Rock, and it kind of, you know, it took off from there. And then the Rock took over, and that's when they brought in Owen. So uh, the two the two white guys that were rapping on the way down there. Whoa. Yes, ma'am. Who's that? That's Ahmed Johnson. No, the woman taking off his jacket, Travis. Oh. oh. Ahmed's got a wedgie. <laughs> uh, JC Ice and Wolfie D are the two white guys that were rapping on the way down to the ring. Oh, God. Yeah. And they... Ba uh, That's embarrassing for white people. Bart Gunn. There's the winner of the brawl for all. The baddest man in the WWF outside of Butterbean. <laughs> well, Butterbean wasn't part of the WWF, so he still, you know. Well, he, he came he's in. Guy. He and did his thing. Ass. Yeah, I know. Speaking hey. of which, brawl for all is going to be an episode of Dark Side of the Ring, Travis. Oh, We're going to really? have a whole episode of Dark Side of the Ring on brawl for all, and the next one is on New Jack. And I have to watch that because they're gonna they're interviewing New Jack about him stabbing motherfuckers in the ring. Yeah, I remember like hearing like he was like, you know, wrestling for ECW while he had active warrants and shit. <laughs> <laughs> Almost killed somebody. Yeah, yeah. A few times. Bart Gunn is a big motherfucker, man. Well, that's the thing. Like, people don't even realize how big Billy is, though. Like, it's like... That's true. Well, no. Well, you do now that you see him on AEW with yeah, those guys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not a knock on AEW. I'm just saying. With the size of the majority of the talent nowadays and the people that wrestle nowadays, Billy Gunn is a lot bigger than almost everyone on that roster except for, like, Luchasaurus, now Lance Archer, a few other guys. He's a big motherfucker.
So the nation was a black militant group mm-hmm. that allowed white members. Now, isn't that technically with his hair? Isn't crush? Isn't that? I mean, is it okay because the nation let him in for him to wear his hair like that? Like, is that cultural appropriation? I don't know. Maybe I think the black lady braided it for him. So I was gonna say, if she braids his hair, is it okay? Because when I was in high school, Travis. They tried to give me I, – I don't know. You all looking at me now won't know this, but when I was in high school, I had hair down to my shoulders. I had long hair. So did I. And well, uh, had, the, had the drapers. The girls, the girls over at Thornwood High School there in South Holland not only loved my hair, but uh, during study hall tried to give me cornrows. I couldn't, I couldn't do it. Um, and I also think that's partially why I went bald so early. But they tried. I spent a whole study hall – they tried to give me cornrows. Could you imagine me in high school with cornrows? I'd have laughed. Yeah. Yeah, that was back in the day. We both had long hair like that. I remember, like, I specifically remember one day us walking down the street because I had taken my braids out. And so, like, my shit was just out and blowing and shit. And the wind was blowing. And both of our shits were just while we walking down fucking, I think it was walking down State Street. And we'd ride around together listening to DMX. <laughs> What these bitches want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, those were good days. Yeah, man. But we had bills and shit. That guy back there is really, really mad at the ref. Which guy? Uh, he sat down now, but he was standing up and he's like, what the fuck, ref? <laughs> people don't do that no more. Like, you don't get that kind of reaction. Like, people really believe in the shit's going on. And this is... I, 97, we were 10 years old. I still thought wrestling was real. I thought all this stuff was really happening. I I still, at 10 years old, had not figured out that The Undertaker couldn't actually summon lightning and fire <laughs> at will. Like, I thought he had superpowers. It was dope as shit. How do you wrestle in cowboy boots? And I mean, we talk about how guys, like, we're like, oh, I can't believe he's wrestling in jeans, like John Cena in jean shorts and shit. Mm-hmm. Or, you know, Kevin Owens now in his uh, basketball shorts or Dean Ambrose in jeans. But, I mean, Bart Gunn was doing it fucking in 97, no problem. Yeah, both the smoking guns. That was what they were doing. And that's the thing. He's not wearing cowboy boots. He's just wearing, you know, his wrestling boots that look like cowboy boots. Because if you look closer, you know. The magic of high definition television, you can tell those aren't actually cowboy boots. But we thought also, they were. I don't understand how Ahmed Johnson nor Farouk ever were WWF champion back then. I mean, he was the first ever. Oh, there's D Lo. Look at D Lo. Ah. Look at D Lo's hair. Yeah. We'll do another time check, guys. Uh, 29, 10, 11, 12, 13. Do you remember why Ahmed Johnson and Farouk didn't get along? Because I feel like uh, Ahmed should have been in the nation. Yeah, and like I think that was what it was all about, that Farouk wanted him to join the nation, and he wouldn't do it. Yeah, but uh, why not? Like, Ahmed's a much better fit for the nation than Crush. Is There's a bulldog. That's a bulldog, <laughs> yeah, Travis. That, that was an actual bulldog, oh, yes. And from our last conversation we were having, I called a move uh, the Emerald Fusion. And you said it was, I don't remember what the fuck you said, but it wasn't an Emerald Fusion. You were correct. It wasn't. It is a uh, Air Raid Crash was what that move was. I don't remember what you're talking about, but okay. <laughs> but yeah, I do know I know what an Emerald Fusion is because I use it as one of my wrestler's finishers. Dominator. This is what Bobby Lashley should be doing. Not... Against oh, yeah. that was not a pretty one. It wasn't. Well, you like Bart Gunn's a big motherfucker. We just talked yeah. about this, but yeah, that's what he should be doing. That is what oh. Bobby Lashley should be doing. Mike Kyoto, <laughs> a really, really fucking young Mike Kyoto. I think it is. All white people look alike, so it's hard to tell. Yeah, yeah. yeah you got D'Lo on the outside before he was really D'Lo. In that suit with those shoulder pads. <laughs> Who was that? That looked like uh, Titus O'Neil. <laughs> I don't know. I couldn't get a clear look at him. 
Do you know who the black lady that was with the nation at this point was? No. Gorilla Monsoon, Vince. Yeah, I believe he was the commissioner at this point. Uh, President Gorilla Monsoon. Oh, okay. Yeah. Look at those glasses. Same shit. Because I think Sergeant Slaughter was the first quote-unquote commissioner on TV. Could be wrong. I do remember Gorilla Monsoon and Jack Tunney were both the president. Mm -hmm. And uh, Roddy Piper had a small role, I think, as president for a little while, too. I don't know. I remember Roddy Piper being commissioner over at um, WCW. Are they booing Gorilla Monsoon? I love how we're pretending like Vince isn't in charge. <laughs> he's out here interviewing motherfuckers like he don't he's not a billionaire. Oh, now he might not have been a billionaire, but you know what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. Until they're not. Very true. Oh hell yeah. However, Okay. okay, boo boo that motherfucker. Yep, no, boo him. Fuck that. And mind you, ladies and gentlemen, this is leading to the greatest WrestleMania match possibly of all time undertaker versus Shawn michaels is a strong oh, contender I was about to say man randy orton versus or, uh, randy orton randy savage um at wrestlemania 3 also a strong contender but bret hart stone cold in chicago wrestlemania 13 one of the best wrestlemania matches of all time mm -hmm. So I missed it. So we got Stone Cold, Bret Hart, Undertaker, and who? Oh, I was talking. I didn't hear it. I know. That's why I didn't hear it, because you were talking. You're always talking. You talk a lot. You you keep saying that. I tweet a lot. Yeah. I talk a lot. I've been told that my whole life. Yeah, I don't remember who the other one is. I know Undertaker wins this match, though. So Of course, because Undertaker's the shit. Yeah, I just remember it was, I think it was Undertaker oh. versus Sid for the title. Sounds about right. There's Austin in that terrible jacket with the wings and the stars. <laughs> I love Heel King. Like, unfortunately, Heel King is not working in 2020, and everyone wants him off commentary. Really, dude? I can't say everyone. The vocal majority on Twitter mm -hmm. does not like King on commentary anymore. They say he he doesn't work in 2020 like he did in 1997, and we got to get rid of him. I actually heard someone say today they'd rather listen to Byron Saxton on commentary than Jerry the King Lawler. That's a bit extreme. Byron Saxton, for the character he plays, fairly entertaining. I mean, that stuff he did with Stone Cold on Raw at the PC, fun shit. Jerry the King Lawler can't come to PC because his old ass is susceptible to the coronavirus too. So, oh yeah, he's old. 
Why is he yelling at Vince? Why is he not yelling at Gorilla? Vince ain't in charge. Same reason that Brett was yelling at Vince earlier, you know? Because <laughs> they know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the hitman's back. So where did he go? Like, did he just go grab a seat in the crowd and hang out? I will give Brett credit. Brett made Stone Cold Steve Austin. And here we go. Two of the greatest of all time. Hell yeah. And yeah, now they, I don't know what they're, what, what they were doing there, but all right, here we go. Well, Stone Cold went for a double leg takedown and then Bret Hart tried to pin him. He's pinning <laughs> yeah, him. It did. It looked like he was trying to get a pin. Stone Cold's <laughs> rolling him over. Looks like Bret Hart's there, trying to mount him. There's Earl Hebner with hair. Heavy. Who else do we see here? Yeah, who's that guy? I recognize Pat. the ref with the bald spot, but I don't know what the fuck his name is. Yeah, I recognize Pat. Oh, yeah, of course, Pat. I don't know who that other guy next to Pat is. I do see Briscoe, too, though. The guy with the hair like uh, Larry from the Three Stooges? Yeah, I don't know who that yeah, is either. Yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, I miss these so much. Oh, Classy, pretty Blassie. They let a little kid. They let a little kid. That's like Shawn Michaels. Yeah. And, yeah. Mm, yep. Yep. Mm, they sure did. Mm, mm, mm. <sighs> I like how nobody's holding Stone Cold back. Here we go. Oh! The lights. Little known fact for all y'all. Consistently at every WrestleMania until WrestleMania 30, the worst WrestleMania of all time, which people have been fighting me on Twitter and I don't give a shit. Worst WrestleMania of all time. When the under <laughs> oh, yep, punch him in the face. I used to get down on one knee and salute the Undertaker <laughs> through his entire entrance. I didn't care oh, if it was five minutes shit. long. I remember I would get you down doing that shit. And pose and salute the Undertaker during his entrance. This is amazing. This is, we need this. Bring this back. Not like these two, but we need the <laughs> yeah, heat and the feud like this. Like we need the storytelling. We need the intensity. And big the, part of that comes from the crowd, though. Like the crowds just aren't rowdy like this no more. You see how he sold that punch? I feel like they just, I mean, you do see there. there's a lot of no-selling on NXT and AEW, and they, there are some hard hits, but I just feel like they don't sell like they did here, and the, the striking doesn't look as effective because of the way they sell nowadays. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, look, like you. They look like they're trying to kill each other right now, mm -hmm. which is what made it believable, which is why I love this shit. Like, Undertaker looked like he literally just tried to rip Stone Cold's head off. It wasn't pretty. Yeah, it like, wasn't. Yo, look how good, look how well I can do this move. Look how smooth it is. It wasn't all that. Yeah. Like, yo, let's get in here and fight. You think he's going to be able to do this against AJ Styles? You think he's still going to be able to walk the climb up there and walk the ropes? I hope so. Because if Undertaker can't do Undertaker shit, he shouldn't be there. You've been saying Undertaker shouldn't be there for a long time. Yeah, so. yeah. And I stand by that. He should have stopped after that last Hell in a Cell match with Triple H. And if he had listened to me, WrestleMania 30 wouldn't have happened. I'd say he should have stopped after CM Punk. I think that was his last great match with CM Punk. That match I get the, Triple H I get the like, end of the era thing. I understand yes, that. but it was the perfect ending, Matt. It was perfect. WrestleMania 29 against CM Punk was a amazing match. It and was. It was. But I would... I'm sure you agree with me. I would gladly sacrifice that to not have gone through WrestleMania 30. It's also weird to see Stone Cold, like, I mean, he always was kind of a heel, but, like, wrestling as a heel and begging Undertaker to back off and shit. Because mm -hmm. he's, he's Stone Cold, but he's not really Stone Cold yet. Like, this match at WrestleMania 13 is what makes Stone Cold. Bret Hart makes Stone Cold. Like, I will give him that. If it wasn't for that match... Along with, you know, the Montreal screw job and Vince going heel, I don't think Austin would have been what he was, you know, 
the biggest draw in wrestling ever. Mm-hmm. Arguably, you know, dude, look at those elbows to the back of the head. These guys are just beating the shit out of each other. I love it. Yeah, arguably better than that human trash can, Hulk Hogan. Did he just punch him in the dick? I think it was like a hamstring thing. We're like, you know. You remember in the old school uh, SmackDown games when you'd have to hit a finisher and you'd always set it up with a toe kick? The toe kick, yeah. And I always <laughs> I always assumed the toe kick was a kick to the dick. Kind of <laughs> like I assumed that uh, Art Lean in Mortal Kombat was Charles Barkley for like years. <laughs> So you're such a fucking idiot, dude. I watched like, it today. He looks like Charles Barkley. No, he does not look like Charles he Barkley. He looks just like Charles Barkley. He does not look like Charles Barkley. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Not. Do another time check. Uh, we. This is our last match, ladies and gentlemen. We are at forty-two oh three oh five oh six. 07. We've got about six minutes left in this match and in this show. Um, I I mean, it, it, obviously, it's only an hour long. It's a short show, but they gave us quite a bit. We had that great tag team match. We had uh, the Farouk match. We got this, and then all the Austin, Bret Hart. Like, yeah. we got more out of this Solid. than I got out of a three out of three hour Raw. We did. I, I've got a new respect for Furnace, Doug Furnace, <laughs> my boy Doug Furnace. <laughs> But you, but you don't like uh, Lafon. Fuck Lafon. Lafon, <laughs> yeah, Lafon ain't shit. What is he? <laughs> what the fuck is Jerry? Jerry's <laughs> trying to manage Stone Cold right now. Yeah, I don't understand what's happening there either. His ribs. A- his ribs. Oh, that was a kick to. The- yeah, that he was saw kick- that. That was definitely a kick to the dick. <laughs> the ref, <laughs> He's like, the ref, the ref, like fuck whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Which is crazy because, like, oh, JR. Stone. Oh, JR and Heavy used to be like Stone Cold's guys later on, you know? He's in the position. Oh. He's going to sit up. Oh, he's sitting up. Yeah, he's going to sit up. He's going to sit up. This is also weird gear for The Undertaker. Like, I don't remember this. I do. Gear on The Undertaker. Wait, what's going on back here? Oh, uh, we got Vader. We got Perry Satin. No, who the fuck is that? Yeah, who's that big motherfucker back there? Uh, trying to hold back Vader? The bald guy? No, no the one, like, opposite Vader. Oh, I, I didn't see that. <clears throat> Jesus Christ, they're plugging the shit out of the Royal Rumble during this. Even though the Rumble already happened. Yeah. Like, this is the third Royal Rumble commercial in an hour-long episode. You gotta know. Like, they used to sell, like, the encores for these pay-per-views. Yeah, that's true. I remember there was a time where somehow, like, when we first got Satellite... We used to get. Oh, he didn't sit up yet. He might have during the commercial break. I doubt they they do that during the break though. But um, we were getting pay per view for free. <laughs> did you guys have like the? Uh, did your dad know a guy who could get like the satellite card unlocked? I don't remember how it worked. I just know we had satellite, and then somehow we just had pay per view for free. I, I kind of remember around, that because I feel like I came over to your house and watched a couple. You, I think so. This was in like the um, – yeah, this happened in the fall, like when we first started seeing that shit. Ooh. You never see that anymore either. You never see someone like just go to the rope and kick the rope out from under anyone. Like they'll, they'll hit the guy. Yeah. Occasionally you'll see like someone stumble into the rope or – a lot of it's just setting them up on the corner. Like, there was a reason why Undertaker got as far as he did in that move, and it's because he kicked the ropes out from Austin. He didn't just run after Austin climbing up the ropes and grabbing the headlock, and then Austin just stood there. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. 
There we go. There it is. From <laughs> Nikita. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Oh, did you ever watch La Femme Nikita? I did. I never actually watched an episode. Wait, Vader. Vader and Paul Bearer. I guess Vader's the other one, only one, other one in that match. Possibly. It would make sense to put him in there. I can't remember. Is Paul Bearer against Undertaker, Undertaker at this point? I believe he's with um, Mankind now. And Vader, didn't Vader and Mankind kind of form an alliance at this point with Paul Bearer against The Undertaker? Possibly. I don't remember. I heard that Vader never used to wash his gear and his gloves would reek to all hell. Oh, <laughs> really? Yeah, like bad. I know the mask used to stink, but his did. Um, Kane's like, used to stink like awfully. Also, I remember Vader on Boy Meets World, and those are my favorite episodes of Boy Meets World. I remember when he was too. Frankie's dad. Austin's running. Bret Hart's chasing him. Just chaos everywhere. Yeah, man. It was a fun kind of chaos. Yeah, this, this keeps you interested. This keeps you hooked. This keeps, like, we have watched an hour of wrestling, and I have not picked up my phone and looked at it once, Travis. I did once to look up who Clarence Mason was, but that yeah, was but it. that was for a reason. Like I'm not like on Twitter, kind of scrolling through. Like, oh, yeah, this is a cool match. What's going on? You know, like God I was damn. hooked for 48 minutes. Whew. Holy shit! Whew. Back suplex Vader's big ass. Probably blew his back out. Yeah, Vader's that fourth guy. I think, yeah, it makes sense. Oh, man, I think this is the end. Yeah, that's it. Like, man, oh, like, I wanted more. I, say, I want more. Well, you guys will get more next week, um, I think, for the foreseeable future, unless they start putting on full shows and I'm watching them and I talk to Travis and we deem, like, it's worth doing a full episode. We're just going to keep doing this until, you know, coronavirus kind of – they find a cure or they quarantine enough people to kind of kill it off and we get back to normal. Um, I think this is going to be a regular thing. We'll start going through and just watching old episodes of WWF, maybe some ECW because I know there's a lot of ECW that are one hour episodes that Travis has never seen. And that'll just be pure chaos and fun shit. And we'll do some shit like this. We'll do some watch alongs. We got the network. Um, so if you guys enjoyed this, let us know if you want more of this, let us know. Um, I think it was a fun episode. We will still, touch on topics from current product and everything. But uh, for now, I think this is going to be the format going forward. And I think it worked out well. Yeah, so works for uh, me. perfect. All right. Well, you guys can follow me on Twitter at Matt Ritter. That is at M A T T R I D D E R. You guys can follow Travis on Twitter and Instagram at Sir Cuslot. That is at S I R underscore C U S S A L O T T. You guys should absolutely follow the creation world on Twitter and Instagram. That is the T H E creation C R E A T I A world on both you guys can find us on facebook at facebook.com slash group slash smack and raw and facebook.com slash creation world you guys can also go check out the super flash hero of tomorrow podcast everywhere you guys find this one i've got links to our podcast for the link tree at matt ritter they've got a twitter they've got a facebook it's facebook.com slash groups slash super flash hero of tomorrow new episode dropped it's available and a new creation conversation is available right now that you guys can go check out that was also recorded. You guys can check that out at Facebook.com. And see me take my last drink of alcohol for quite some time. And do that. Um, let's support Travis and his decision to sober up and uh, work on that drinking issue. That's not an issue. And last but not least, guys, check me out this Sunday night. Uh, go to my Twitter. Mm -hmm. I've retweeted it uh, for the time. I will be joining the Smacked Raw podcast for this wrestling march madness tournament uh it should be something really cool for both our podcasts i'm looking forward to getting with uh at ses vince and at mr 8984 talking some wrestling getting a little collaboration done and if this goes well hopefully i could do more and it's less stuff that travis has to do with me but still wrestling related for you guys content you guys can consume hopefully it brings a few more eyes on us 
and a few more eyes from you guys on them. I'm not saying stop watching us. Don't stop watching us, but also go watch them as well because they're really cool guys. Um, anything else, Travis? Um, yeah, you know, in these times, you know, everybody's struggling. We all trying to work through some things. But if you can, please subscribe on the Patreon. Whatever you can do helps because this stuff isn't free. Help us keep this thing going. Um, buy some merch. I'll put the link in here to get you to get some merch. Come on now. Help us out. Help us help you. Help us keep entertaining oh, you. You know. And speaking of the Patreon, we officially, uh, first off, we need to shout out both Mark Robles and Michael LaShawn Willis, yes. who uh, subscribe to our Patreon. And the behind the scenes, the first episode of the behind the scenes is available for that $20 tier. Ready to go. Um, Mara got that put together, so uh, you yeah, know, we're putting those up until we have people subscribed at that level. So now that we do, putting it on up there. Better late than never, but thank you, Mara, for doing that. Um, I don't even know why you did that. She's not going to hear this. I know she's not, but it's fun for me, Travis. I know she's never going to listen to it. I might record this and just send it to her. <laughs> I may do that just to troll her. Um, but yeah, please go do that. And um, there was something else I wanted to say, but I don't know what it was. So for now, check us out on all those platforms. We appreciate it. We hope you guys enjoyed this. Let me know if you guys like this watch along, if you guys want to see more of this, because we can definitely do more of this, do some shit. Um, Travis and I were talking about doing our reviews for pay-per-views, probably starting with WrestleMania 36, making that Patreon exclusive also in that $5 tier, along with Return to Wrestling, which will have a new episode coming out soon, I believe. We're yeah. at the end of the month. So next, episode yeah, three should be dropping on YouTube. Four will be available on the Patreon, so please go check that out and support it. Uh, we recorded some new content that I think went really well. We had a lot of fun with it, too, so I'm looking forward to that in a couple months. Um, anything else? Not that's it. All right, guys. For Sir Cussalot, Travis Pointer, I am the Warden Matt Ritter. We are smacking it raw, and we are that damn good. Peace.